So question six from the 2016 Advanced Air Maths. Here we go, McLaurin's expansion, six marks. You have to ultimately obtain an expression for this by first of all finding expressions for the two parts. Now it just says find McLaurin's expansions. It couldn't say state straight off, but I'm assuming that you're allowed just to use the known expansions because they're so common for E and sine. I'll just state them again here. E to the x is just 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial, which is such a simple one to remember. And from that are derived sine and cosine. The sine starting with the x and taking alternate terms. So it'll be x but alternate alternating signed terms minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial minus and so on. I'm assuming we can start with that instead of going through the differentiations. Although the differentiations aren't that bad really, especially with the e to the 4x, that just keeps getting multiplied by 4. And this one just flips between sine and cosine with the numbers building up of course. But I'm just going to use these known ones so that I can say for the first one, right, do you want the sine of 3x? Well, we'll just put 3x into this. So I'll have 3x minus 3x cubed over 3 factorial. And that's as far as you're going to go because it just wants it up to x cubed. Whoa. I'm going to be sharing that 3 soon. We covalent bond forming. Just tidy it up then. So we've got 4 sine 3x. That'll be 3x minus 3 to the power 3 was a 3 underneath, so 3 to the power 2, and that leaves a 2 under there. 9 upon 2, x, oops, cubed. What about e to the 4x? Popping 4x in for x, so 1 plus 4x plus 4x squared this time over 2 factorial plus 4x cubed this time over 3 factorial plus, and oh no, 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 we stop there, don't we? Well, they want to go up to x to the power 3. Tidying that up. 1 plus 4x, and that'll be 16 over 2 is 8x squared. This is a bit too crushed, really, isn't it? And that's going to be 64 over 6, 32 upon 3. x to the power 3. Again, a little bit crushed up there to the lines above. Again, a bit too close because I'm wanting to expand this now for e to the 4x sine 3x. I'm going to need to pull them away, but I may have some difficulty because there'll be some London dispersion forces going on there. I want this one. And that'll be 1 plus 4x plus 8x squared plus 32 upon 3x cubed times this one. 3x minus 9 upon 2x cubed. Looks like a big multiplication, but remember all the time, you're undergoing no higher than x cubed. So you're only picking out whatever's sufficient. 1 times that is 3x, that's fine. 1 times that is minus 9 upon 2x cubed, that's fine. Now the 4 times it, 4 times that is 12x squared, that's fine. But that's power 4, so I'm not interested. Going on to this one. 8 times 3 will be 24, and that will be x cubed. But that goes to power 5. Don't want that. That goes to power 4. That goes to power 6. So that's all we've got. So finally, tidying it up is going to be 3x squared. Sorry, 3x plus 12x squared. And then it will be 24, 48, 39. 39 upon 2x cubed. You can actually do a little check if you've got time when you've got something like this. You know that if you're only going up to x cubed, then this is only approximately the answer. But it'll be closer to the answer the smaller x is. Obviously, x would have to be well under 1. So if you tried something like a tenth into both sides, see how close they get. If you tried x equals to 0.1, then the effects, hopefully, of the higher terms will be insignificant. And we'll see if that's approximately correct for that. Typing it into the left hand side, you get 0 0.44086 and so on. Typing it into the right hand side, you get 0 
4395 and so on. That's not bad at all. So it's probably correct then. Of course you don't need to do that.